Madam Toastmaster, Toastmasters guests. Yes, there is too much hocus pocus. We are surrounded by myth conceptions. Some of them we get from our own upbringing, from our parents. Unfortunately, many we get from the internet and advertising. Tonight, I have done extensive research and I am able to point the finger at some very common myths that are part of our everyday lives. First of all, this is one of the great myths of the current world, that we are all dehyd chronically dehydrated and that we need to drink at least eight glasses of water a day to be healthy. And not just any water, it has to be pure water. This is the myth that's created by the bottled water industry. The truth is this, that most of our water, most of our hydration, we can get naturally through food. Yes, we do need to have water, but by eating vegetables and fruit, we can get most of the water and hydration that we need. So what I say to you is this, next time you are tempted to go and grab a bottle of that very expensive water from a shelf at the supermarket, think, do I really need this or am I better off eating an apple? Myth number two. Now, those of you amongst us who are experienced may recognise this. This I got from a friend who's got something of a fetish. This is a fake chastity belt. Now, chastity belts were supposed to be worn back in the Middle Ages to protect noble bloodlines from extramarital impregnation. But I'm here to tell you that they never existed. Now, apparently in the British Museum, there was one exhibited from 1846 but just as recently as 1996, it proved to be false. Now, those of you who are not quite familiar with what a chastity belt is, I'll just give this little ditty that might help you. In days of old, when knights were bold and contraception had not been invented, chastity belts were used so wives weren't abused and the husbands rode away contented. So myth number two, chastity belts. Apart from being in some person's little fetish co uh, closet, most are fake. Myth number three comes from history. We've all seen those pictures in movies of the Vikings with the horns. You know the sort of thing? False. Now, Roberta Frank is a famous historian and a person, an expert on Vikings. And she says conclusively that no such thing existed. You think about it. Why would any self-respecting warrior go into hand-to-hand -hand combat with great horns sticking out of their helmets? Just think of the problems that would cause. There you are fighting away and next minute you get hooked up amongst all these horns. All that they wore were leather helmets. That's all. Now the idea of these horns actually comes from an opera, Wagner's Ring. It turns out that the costume designer, the first production of Wagner's Ring, decided that all of the Vikings in the opera would wear horns. And from that time on, this concept of Vikings with helmets, with horns out the side, has been part of our mythology. Myth number four, the Dead Sea. No, everybody believes you go to the Dead Sea and you'll never drown. Now, the Dead Sea didn't get the name the Dead Sea for no reason. 
more people drown in the Dead Sea in Israel than any other body of water. Now you might think, why is that? Now, the theory is this, the myth is this, that because there is so much salinity in the Dead Sea, that there's natural buoyancy. You won't sink. Now, the problem is that most people go swimming in the Dead Sea face down. Now, when they get into some sort of difficulty, most people will push down with their arms and their legs to right themselves. But the problem is, because it's so salty and you're pushing down with your arms and your legs, it's, you're not going anywhere. And everyone's sitting on the bank, you know, and your person's in difficulty. No, they'll right. No one ever drowns in the Dead Sea. They'll be right. Sure enough, many people have drowned actually in the Dead Sea. So if you're going to go swimming in the Dead Sea, the secret, Toastmasters, is to swim on your back if you want to stay alive. Now, my next myth concerns the old chestnut. Should men wear boxers or briefs? <laughs> now, the question is this. Do boxers allow for a greater chance of male fertility? Because the idea is this, that by wearing boxes, you're decreasing the scrotal temperature. And by, by decreasing the scrotal temperature, you're allowing the sperm, those little wrigglers, to have a better chance of being like Ian Thorpe and swimming their way to where they need to go. Whereas, if you wear the briefs, the chances are, you know, those, those sperm are going to get squeezed a lot more, the temperature will rise, and fertility will naturally fall. I'm here to tell you it's nonsense. Now, a study done by two eminent urologists, which I found by reading the Journal of Urology, very interesting document, I must say, I found out that a study had been done in 1998, and the study showed that, in fact, there was no difference whatsoever. Now, I have done some research in this matter, and I have found that it really is nonsense. It's not a case of whether we wear boxes or briefs. The best chance of conceiving is to wear nothing at all. <laughs> Finally, may I say this. Always think very carefully when you come across myths because most of what we hear needs to be verified. But there is one myth that is true. And, I, and Jonathan and some other people in this room can testify to this, that bald men do make better lovers. Thank you, Toastmasters.